Before we get too far, I have to say that I generally don't discuss naming conventions. While they have some bearing on the design itself, the names don't really play a large role, at least not overall. I'd have to say though, the California class is probably one of the most apt names. We're presented with a vessel that barely works and has to rely on other ships to get around, yet it has someone in charge of it that thinks this craft is as powerful and is as great as a sovereign class ship, when really it's a piece of crap. The California class really takes after its namesake. I mean, it's bringing real life to fiction. Ultimately, California and the politicians that live there can get fucked. While the creator of Lower Decks, the series from which this vessel comes from, states that the ship has always been around, there is little evidence in canon to support the assertion. Indeed, it seems that the California class is a direct response to both the Klingon and Dominion Wars, at least the fallout from those. The design, like the Luna and Sovereign class, appear to be highly specialized for specific purposes. Unlike the ships designed in the eras of the Next Generation and arguably Deep Space Nine, this starship is generally used for secondary roles. Additionally, the vessels are color-coded so that they can be easily identified as to their purpose. Vessels with a focus on engineering are identified with a yellow stripe across the hull, while those focused on medical and the sciences have blue, and Command and Explorer has red. This would not only look stylish, but assist in other vessels, especially enemies, identify which ships are and are not a threat. The construction of the Cali class includes a saucer section to the fore and secondary hull position to the stern. Both the saucer section and secondary hull are accessible via turbo lift systems that connect through pylons that apparently run across the warp nacelles. It, you know, this just seems safe as hell. The saucer section contains 11 decks, with the secondary hull incorporating at least 9, possibly more. Ironically, the registration of the ship is behind the saucer section, not in front of it. Almost as if someone expected to have a lot of scenes with the viewer observing the vessel from behind. Mm. The interior of the craft has a similar feel to that of the galaxy. Even though the ship doesn't have any families and is utilized exclusively for Starfleet personnel, it still gives a familiar and more comfortable feeling like a condominium in space versus that of the more Spartan feeling of other designs of the same era. Among the areas we are aware of include the main bridge, which unsurprisingly has a layout similar to that of a galaxy class with the captain's chair in the middle, executive officer to the right, and another position available for I don't know, candy stripers to the left. A tactical station is directly behind the captain's chair with various wall-mounted panels surrounding for other tasks. The operations and con station is directly in front of the captain's chair, flanking it on either side. A generally nondescript ready room is accessible from the bridge as well as a conference room, which is idolized by some. The shuttle bays of the vessels are similar to that of a Miranda, located aft of the saucer section on either side. They encompass both decks five and six and include a type Type 6A shuttlecraft, Argo type ground vehicle, and a Type 8 shuttlecraft. There's also an additional ancillary shuttle bay in the engineering section, which is used for bringing in engineering supplies, hazardous materials, and other cargoes not meant for the main bays. While we don't have a lot of information on the sick bays, the area seems spartan by comparison to other parts of the vessel, though the layout of the beds as well as the chief medical officer's office appears to be a mixture of intrepid and galaxy design. The ship is also equipped with brigs, transporter rooms, repair bays, and so many cetacean ops, you'd be surprised. The crew's quarters of the vessel are a return to the standards of the original series, with lower ranking and non-commissioned officers having bunk beds that are equipped with very small storage areas used as closet space. These residential hallways were rarely without someone present, and many had windows allowing the occupants to view out. Higher ranking officers and people of importance were afforded quarters that included either one large room or two connected rooms that had a king-size bed, couch, and other lovely furnishings. The ship has recreation centers and facilities for its crew and dignitaries. These include holodecks, bars, squash courts, and other leisure activities. As of the upload of this video, we don't know the exact amount of weapons. 
but the vessel does appear to have phaser rays, some of them in the same areas as the Galaxy-class ship. Additionally, they would have photon torpedoes as well. The propulsion system includes a warp core with an incorporated inverted plasma distributor. This was thought to cause the slightly higher pitch of the warp engines, though some claim it might be due to the dilithium disbursement manifold. The ship itself has been observed going at least warp 7, though it might have been able to attain a faster rate of speed. Additionally, the ship would, of course, have impulse engines. Ultimately, the California class is a vessel often used behind the scenes and for secondary purposes. It's an example of the shift of Federation policy, beginning to make their vessels for specific uses and jobs, versus that of having a starship be a catch-all. It's a fun little vessel, and I look forward to seeing more. Hopefully they have them in live action. But these are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next. Lore Reloaded.